Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another screencast. Yours truly, Mr. Stano, your earth science teacher. Uh, the next little topic we're going to go on to is the cause for the seasons. As you know, here in New York, we have pretty much have four distinct seasons. We have winter, spring, summer, and fall, as denoted by these four pictures right here. And I think it's pretty clear living here on Long Island that when we see green on the trees, most likely we're in summer. Here we're looking at fall when all of a sudden we have that change in colors. Spring right here, the flowering of many tree species that we have here, especially in Garden City. And then here with no leaves, with the snow in the background, it's winter. But what we need to look at is why these seasons are occurring. And it's predominantly due to two different phenomena. The Earth's revolution around the sun, the Earth moving its path around the sun, and also the tilt of Earth, the Earth's Earth's tilt on its axis. Earth's axis, or the tilt of Earth, is roughly 23 and a half degrees. So when we look at this little diagram right here, we can see that Earth has this tilt. And if we would look at a perpendicular line running through, that it's roughly 23 and a half degrees. This makes up for a little bit differences in the amount of insulation coming into certain areas of the Earth at different paths around its sun. During the summer, we are tilted towards the sun. What this means right here is that the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun. Remember, it's clear. let's do a little different color here. We draw our equator in right here. Notice that the north is tilted towards the sun. Northern hemisphere tilted towards the sun. We're in summer. During the winter, it's the opposite. We take a look over here. Draw a line going through our equator. And you can see that the southern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun. So depending on whether northern hemisphere is either tilted towards or away from the sun will let us know if we're in winter or in summer. If for some reason we were to tilt the earth more, maybe bring it down to 30 degrees, now the insulation would be hitting more in the northern hemisphere and we'd have a more extreme season. Because during the winter it'd be even that the sun's rays would even be farther away from or the the most direct sun rays would be farther in the southern hemisphere, giving us a colder winter. We'll go a little bit more into that later on. This diagram right here is another important diagram I would definitely copy down. It's very basic, but it just shows us some of the differences in the tilt. Notice our northern hemisphere here is tilted towards. So we're in summer. These the Actual dates change a little bit from year to year. Usually it's anywhere between June 20th and June 23rd. And that's the same with here, with March for our spring. Notice in winter, December 21st can be anywhere from December 20th to the 23rd. Northern hemisphere is tilted away. And when we get to fall, September 23rd, like I said, it can be anywhere from September 20th to September 23rd. Notice though, in the summer, we're actually further away from the sun, contrary to what most people believe. It has to do with the tilt of the earth that really causes the seasons. During the winter, we're actually closer to the sun. Like I said, this is a diagram I would definitely get down. This one right here also shows the tilt. It tells us what the names are for the start of each season. So we'll start here with summer. We have our summer solstice on June 21st. Unfortunately, these are some dates I would commit to memory. I think most people know the approximate dates, but just in case. Earth's orbit altogether, we're looking at 360 degrees. Notice that we go about three months from season to season. So 360 degrees in 12 months and we have the autumnal equinox september 22nd notice the dates are changed from a little bit from the diagram the previous diagram our winter solstice and our vernal equinox or the spring first day of spring 
I would also add these if you copy the previous diagram. You can add this information onto that diagram also, just so you don't have to keep copying with these down. Earth's revolution around the sun, or its path around the sun, it has an elliptical orbit. We'll go a little bit more into that in a few weeks. Basically, an elliptical, elliptical orbit, it's going to be oval-like. Or it can be oval-like. During the winter, we are close to the sun, also known as perihelion. Uh, it's a term you should be familiar with. You don't, may or may not want to commit it to memory, but I would just be familiar. Uh, during the summer, we are further away from the sun, also known as aphelion. Okay, this is just looking at perihelion versus aphelion. If you wanted to, you could copy this down. Here would be winter, aphelion, summer. This is also the shape of the ellipse right here. And we're, like I said, we'll go in more into this in the astronomy unit. Okay, the summer solstice. I'm going to stop here and I'll let you guys just get that information about the Earth's tilt and its revolution around the sun before we go on to the actual information about the this seasons coming up. All right, so look forward to the next one. Thank you. Take care.